because she wasn't here today. She was here in spirit. And, uh, but, so we're going to start, let's start with 80. Do we have uh, those 80 and above? Okay. All right, now as I, as I call your age, Holly, I thought you were fixing to stand up. I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> As I, as I call, your, call out your age, and when I reach it, you just go ahead and sit down, and we're, we'll see who's left standing. Okay, 81. 82. 83. 84. All right, we're down to 85. 86. 86. Looks like we got one left. You know, I, I always hesitate to ask this because I, I was just raised never to do that. <laughs> she read my mind like mothers do. <laughs> Miss Margaret is so glad, so glad that you're able to be here with us today. You've been, we know you've been going through a rough time physically here lately, but we're glad that you're able to be here. Martin, be sure and, and take, this is hers, this arrangement is hers, and uh, we, we're uh, so glad that you're here. Okay, now the youngest mother present, and I guess we need to start with, um, well, let's start with age 30. All mothers age 30 and below. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go backwards. So when I reach your age, sit down. 29. <laughs> you didn't stand up very long. I'm sorry. 28. 27. All right. We got one left. Congratulations. Now, your, your, th this small arrangement here is yours. So when you leave today, be sure and get that, okay? And thank you for being here. And we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. But uh, we, we know that there's, uh, there's a lot of ladies in this church who, who do so much to make this church what it is. And uh, we're going to be recognizing you in just, just a moment. Right after our chiming and then our, our uh, kids' corner. Okay, boys and girls, come down here and sit with me. Yeah, we in this neat. We got some coming out of the choir. <laughs> That's a first, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, guys, for singing in the choir. You can sit on the floor. It's all right. Thank you. It's so good to see y'all. Come on, Kennedy. Oh well, we lost one. <laughs> Where are you going, Kennedy? Come back in here. <laughs> oh, there she is. Come on. You got to sit with us. David's down here. David's down here. See, raise your hand, David. Raise your hand. Okay, come down here and sit. Can y'all let her by? There you go. Wants to sit by David. What's well, so good to see y'all? So, Brother Rocky's already been talking about it. So, what is today? Mother's Day. It's a day that we appreciate our mothers. And I've got a special book that I want to read you today. And I've read, I've read it before. Carlos, can you hold that for me? Thank you. Um, I didn't read it last year. Does anybody know, remember what I read last year? What? The runaway bunny. 
it, this is called Love You Forever. And I'm going to show you the pictures, okay? A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she, while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. You see the baby? Who has a baby, at, a new baby at their house? Aubrey does. Oh, you do, Tanner? Tanner says he has a and Mallory, Mallory is the baby. Okay. Aubrey has a new baby. Okay. The baby grew. And he grew and he grew and he grew and he grew until he was two years old. Does anybody remember when you were two? You do? You don't remember? Okay. I don't either. He ran all around the house. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator. He took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. I hope none of y'all have ever done that. Okay. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. I think he was. Of course, my son never did anything like that. But at night time, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of the bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, and she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Alright, the little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew and he grew until he was nine years old. Anybody nine years old here? <gasps> Alright. And he never wanted to come in for dinner. I'm sure you're not like that, Carlos. He never wanted to take a bath. And when Grandma visited, sometimes he wasn't very nice. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to a zoo. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? But at night time, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked over the side, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth back and forth and she sang can y'all sing it with me I love you forever I like you for always as long as I'm living my baby you'll be the boy grew he grew and he grew and he grew he grew until he was a teenager he had strange friends and he wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was living in a a barn. <laughs> That's good. Or a zoo. Yeah. Okay. So, but at night when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door and if he was really good and sound asleep, she would crawl across the floor. She'd pick him up and she'd rock him back and forth, back and forth and she'd sing I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, that teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown-up man, and he moved across town. He lived in another house. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got in her car, and she drove across town. And what do you think she did? She had a ladder. If all the lights in her son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked that big old man up, and she rocked him back and forth back and forth and she sang I love you forever I like you for always as long as I'm living my baby you'll be 
Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older and older. One day she called up her son and said, you better come see me because I'm very old and sick. So her son went to see her. And when he opened the door, she tried to sing the song. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, and he sang this song. Can y'all sing it with me? I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy you'll be. He had to change the words. When the sun came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of his stairs. What do you think he was doing? He was thinking, wasn't he? He went into the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, I see that. He sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. That's a good book, isn't it? Very good. Thank y'all for being here. Now, before you go back to your seats, let's see. Miss Teresa, will you help me? And Jason, you get the big vase and bring over here. Uh, youth, youth girls, will y'all come down and help too? We've got a beautiful red rose for all the ladies. All the ladies and the girls, okay? Now, well, y'all got to be careful. Miss Teresa, pull one out. Okay. If you hold it up closer to the top of the flower, up at the flower, Miss Teresa, yeah. Up there, if you hold it up there, there won't be any thorns. And you won't prick your finger. And so I want all the ladies and all the girls to raise your hand till you get a rose. And I want you all to take roses out there. Okay? Can you all do that for me? Thank you. Before we do that, let's say a prayer thanking God for our mothers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the ladies in this church, dear Lord. Some may not have children, but they're still mothers to all of these. Amen. Okay. Thank you all for helping. Okay, ladies, hold your hand up until you get a flower, and then you put your hand down. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And, uh, Guys, y'all can go back in the choir as soon as you... Uh, y'all can go back in the choir. I think the girls got it. Unless you want to take your mama one. Okay? All the ladies and all the young ladies. All the girls, too. We started out with 100. Two of them bit the dust. But uh, we ended up with 98. Y'all want to know where these roses came from? It just shows you how small our world is getting. These roses came from Bogota, Colombia. They left Bogota, Colombia Thursday. They were in Utica at 210 West Main, which is our house, at 10 o'clock Friday morning. Pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat. And we'll clean all the leaves up later. Y'all don't worry about those. Okay, raise your hands if you do not have a flower. Hold it up high. We'll get the leaves. You can help us pick up the leaves when it's over. Okay? You want to do that? Okay. Give Miss Jan one. Miss Debbie, you got one? Okay. Some in the back. Oh, balcony. We got, we got two ladies. Okay. Thank you, Kennedy. Okay. There's two in the balcony if two of y'all would, would go. Woo. 100 roses. 98 roses went quick, didn't they? That's great. Thank all of you ladies for being here today. Thank you, Mason. Okay. Somebody going up to the balcony, Isabel? Tanner. There's two. Tanner went up. Okay, Tanner went up, they said. Thank you, Tanner. Okay. We're going to... Tanner's taking her one right now. Thank you, Tanner. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, moms. 
and dads. We can say good morning to dads too. Um, thanks for being here for worship at Utica Baptist Church today. Um, we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. good singing. Let's continue worshiping this morning. Go ahead, stand up, get your hymns out, turn to hymn number 72, Holy Ground, and we're going to sing that first. Uh, we're going to sing that two times through, two times through, Holy Ground, hymn number 72. so much this morning and thank you for our men too it yes. sounded good yes. let's pray our dear heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful day that you blessed us with that we might come into your house sing praises to you and worship you lord in spirit and in truth we thank you lord for all the blessings in our lives 
especially we thank you for Jesus Christ our Savior. We ask now, dear God, that you would bless our mothers, bless the mothers here throughout the world, dear God, as they uh, provide for us, and love us, and keep us. And we just thank you for them. Dear Lord, we ask now that you be with our pastor as he brings the word that if there be someone here this morning that does not know you as their Savior, then this would be the hour, dear God, that they would come and they would receive the blessing beyond blessing, life with you for eternity. Forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned. We ask that you be faithful to forgive us. Be with all of those that's on our hearts and minds today those that may not be here for whatever reason, those that are sick, those around the world, dear God, that are persecuted and are living in tumultuous times, dear God, times um, unbelievable. We pray, dear God, that you would just be with them and watch for them and just keep them. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Aren't they a good-looking choir? I'm going to ask that again. Aren't they a good-looking choir? Thank you. Thank you. I think they are. We got It's a multi-generational choir. That's great. Turn to 446. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. First and last verses only. turn is coming. Let's stand for the doxology. Remain standing for the offertory prayer to follow.
Jesus. Bless these tithes and offerings. Thank you for these ladies here. In Jesus' name, amen. Myself, sorry. This time I was asked if the uh, youth choir girls would come on down and um, Tyler. Tyler said he wanted to sing, so Tyler, you too. <laughs> the girls and Tyler. Sorry, I'm down a helper today. <laughs> I wish I had more than two hands sometimes. Um, this morning we're going to be singing Love Never Fails, uh, Your Love Never Fails. And um, this morning we got a chance to study a little bit more deeper into some comparisons with 1 Corinthians 13 and Proverbs 31. How Solomon, taking on a different moniker, uh, Lemuel, meaning um, belonging to God, uh, a, a name probably given to him by his mother, um, taught him the characteristics of a wise woman. And if you look closer at that scripture, you'll see a lot of those
those characteristics are real similar with parts of 1 Corinthians 13. Um, how she's not to eat the bread of idleness. That she's supposed to do all good things. And um, she's precious. That she you know, is like a merchant ship traveling far to get food for her children. That she always perseveres, always loves, always hopes. And those are real similar to the chapter of love and the quintessential epilogue of wisdom. It's a lot to be said that all of wisdom and all of love go hand in hand and that scripture a thousand years apart agree with scriptures a thousand years after it was written about a different subject, about a different part of our character, about our own personalities, how wisdom and love go hand in hand. And this morning uh, we want to sing His Love Never Fails. <laughs> One thing remains. Just the current
y'all that was really good it's good to see our young people singing up here on Sunday mornings or singing anytime had a great program last Sunday night uh, not just them but all, all of our kids such a wonderful time turn with me please to Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 <clears throat> now rather than uh, rather than read a passage here we're going to read just a little bit of it. Okay. We're going to lead, read just a little bit at a time. So just keep it open at Luke chapter 1 and we'll get to it in a second. Jill and Pat Williams had 12 children. 12 children. Four of them were biologically theirs. Four were adopted from Korea and four were adopted from the Philippines. And then at one time, in addition to that, they were parenting two foster daughters. Uh, Jill said that most of the time when people would see them all together, they would, they would ask, are, these, are all these kids yours or is this some kind of picnic? And she said, no, I assure you they're all mine and believe me, it's no picnic. <laughs> <laughs> William A. Greenbaum III, the second, once wrote a tribute to mothers and he probably included all the things that he had seen in his own mother and this is this is what he wrote if there's something one cannot do without it is mother father loves her daughter imitates her son ignores her salesmen thrive on her motorists hurry around her teacher phones her and the woman next door confides in her she can be sweeter than sugar more sour than a lemon all smiles and crying her heart out, all within any given two-minute period. She likes sewing, detective stories, having her birthday remembered, church, a new dress, the cleaning woman, father's praise, a little lipstick, flowers and plants, canasta, dinner out on Sunday, a policeman, one whole day in bed, crossword puzzles, sunny days, tea, and the newspaper boy. She dislikes doing the dishes, Father's boss, having her birthday forgotten, the motorist behind her, spring cleaning, Junior's report card, rainy days, the neighbor's dog, stairs, and the man who was supposed to cut the grass. She can be found standing by, bending over, reaching for, kneeling under, and stretching around, but rarely sitting on. She has the beauty of a spring day, the patience of a saint, the appetite of a small bird, and the memory of a large elephant. She knows the lowest prices, everyone's birthday, what you should be doing, and all of your secret thoughts. She is always straightening up after, reminding you to, and taking care of, but never asking for. Yes, a mother is one thing that nobody can do without. And when you have harassed her, buffeted her about, tried her patience and worn her out, and it seems that the end of the world is about to descend upon you, then you can win her back with four little words. Mom, I love you. <laughs> Did you ever try that with your, with your mom when you were in trouble? Well, you know, the Bible places a great deal of emphasis on the role and the influence of mothers. In fact, the word mother or mothers appears in the Bible almost 300 times. Not always 
in a good way, but they're there. The mother who wishes to lead her children down the right path toward righteousness, especially in a world that seems to be determined to pull us all in the other direction, should turn to the pages of Scripture to discover the qualities of a godly woman. So we turn to the Bible today, and in just a few sketchy words that are told to us about Mary, the mother of Jesus, we're able to discover a few of those qualities. And as we read them, uh, we realize that in our day, we truly do need more women like Mary. First of all, in, in uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 38, we need more women like Mary, women who submit to God's plan for their lives. Uh, when the angel Gabriel, and that, this, this, actually this part begins way back up in verse 26. But when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, he said to her, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And then he went on to say to her, You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, Mary knew that she was innocent of any wrongdoing. She knew that nothing she had done had allowed her to become pregnant. So she asked, how will this be since I am a virgin? That's in verse 34. When the angel explained to her that the child within her was of the Holy Spirit, he concluded his visit with her by saying, For nothing is impossible with God. That's verse 37. And what was Mary's response? Did she think of herself and her, her reputation? Did she, did she consider what might happen when Joseph, her fiancé, found out that she was expecting a child? He knew the child wasn't his. Think of how complicated Mary's life had just become. But Luke 138 gives us her reaction to the news. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. You know, today's mother has enormous demands on her time. I guess it's always been like that, but in her role as mother, she also serves as nursemaid, housekeeper, cook, dishwasher, laundress food buyer, gardener, maintenance person, seamstress, dietitian, coach, teacher, interior decorator, and child psychologist. I'm sure I left some things out, didn't I, ladies? And that's in between trips to the doctor, the dance lessons, the piano lessons, the ball practice, and the school plays. And if she also works outside the home, then her life can soon become a complicated mess. Most mothers today give all the they have to satisfying the demands of their family. So when asked to serve God through the church, there's just so little left. But we need more women like Mary. Women who have learned how to prioritize their lives so that the most important things are done. And the other things are done when and if there's time. We need more women like Mary. Women who are sensitive to the Spirit of God so that when an opportunity arises to serve God, she is well able to discern the importance of the request, whether it's actually from God or just to satisfy yet another demand. And most importantly, we need more women in our day who are willing to submit their entire lives to God's plan for them, just like Mary did. Even if they don't understand it or they can't figure it out. We need more women who by faith accept that God is a powerful God and that He does have a plan for them. And that it is far, far better than anything they could come up with themselves. May it be to me... As you have said, we need more women like Mary who are willing to say that. Then secondly, if you go to uh, just a few verses later, starting with verse 46 in this, in this first chapter, we need more women like Mary, women who remember to praise God. Who remember to praise God. Uh, soon after the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, she got ready to, to go visit Elizabeth, who was a close relative. And as soon as Elizabeth saw Mary, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you are bare. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. 
Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Well, Mary was inspired to sing a song. A beautiful hymn of praise to God that through the ages has been called the Magnificat, which is Latin for magnify. And that's what she was doing. It begins like this, verse 46 through 49. My soul glorifies the Lord. Some versions say magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. That was the beginning. And, but the, the, uh, the song that she sang continues on through verse 55. A, a literal translation of that first portion of Mary's song, verse 46, would read like this. My soul declares the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit jumps for joy in God my Savior. If your mother was, or is, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may remember her singing. She may not have a trained voice that would win the applause of thousands, but to your ears, it was the sweetest voice on the face of the earth. I remember visiting with a family several years ago, just after their aged mother had passed away. And what wonderful things they had to say about her. But among the, all the tributes, they're sitting around in the living room just talking about the, the things that their good memories that they had of their godly mother. And among the tributes that they gave was that they remembered her singing while she washed the dishes. She, she sang while she washed the dishes. And there was one song in particular uh, that she always sang. Among others, but there was one in particular. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the, the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. And they remembered her singing that beautiful song. And they didn't talk about any bad notes that she hit. They didn't talk about how her voice might squeak when they got a little bit older. They remembered her singing. They remember her faith. Um, when Sharon's dad was still pastoring, we went up, uh, I believe this was during, during, uh, during the summertime, and uh, it was just a real small congregation. It wouldn't have been, it might have been as much as, as is in, on this one side right over here. And they took time. They didn't have a choir and they didn't have soloists and all that. But they took time in the service to say, does anybody have a message and song for us today? And one or two would get up and they'd, they'd come, they'd open up their hymn book and they'd sing. And I remember one lady in particular who would get up there. She was probably at that time, she's gone to be with the Lord since then. But she was probably 85, mid-80s at least. And she would, uh, she would... She would stand there and she would sing, open up her hymn book and sing. If she, hit, if she hit one note, one correct note in that whole song, I didn't hear it. Her voice squeaked and creaked and eventually she got through it. But I want to tell you something. The light of her testimony shined out of her eyes. It was one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. I didn't know that lady very well, but I knew that this song that she sang came straight out of her heart. And that made it the most beautiful song that was sung in that church that day. But well, today's got the mother is more often serving as a tutor or a counselor to one of her children while the dishwasher's running rather than standing at the sink washing dishes. But yet her entire life can be a song to God. Just like that lady was up there and outside of Kokomo, Indiana. We need more women like Mary. We need, we, we need women who choose to follow and obey the Lord God. Women who are quick to give Him praise whenever He is seen to be at work in their lives. They, they may or may not sing a song when they praise Him. But their hearts and their souls 
sing right along with Mary. My, my soul glorifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. Hmm. My spirit leaps for joy in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Or they may have other beautiful words for their creator. We need more women like Mary. Women who are not ashamed to give glory to God. We need more women who will stand up and praise God. Women who will do so without regard to those who do not understand what they're doing or why they're doing it. Without regard to those who might mock them when they do. We need more women who praise God for what He does in their lives. And thirdly, go to chapter 2 for me. Chapter 2. When Jesus was born is what that chapter is about. You may have been taken aback a little when we started the service today by singing Go Tell It on the Mountain. Has that, has that song ever been sung on, on Mother's Day here? In the, we made history today. <laughs> we need more women like Mary. Women who savor the precious moments that God sends to them. Who savor them. When Jesus was born, the angels appeared to the shepherds one night. They filled the sky with, with the glory of the Lord. And the Bible says that that, that great company of the heavenly host uh, told them where to find the baby. And what to look for when they arrived. So it's the, the scripture says the, that the shepherds said to themselves, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the angels have told us about. And in all the, the marvel and the wonder of that night, Mary was alert and she was sensitive to what glorious things were taking place. And we read that while the shepherds went about spreading the, the word of all they had seen and heard, that Mary's reaction was different. 2.19, look at it. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. We should stop long enough here to just drill down just a little bit deeper. I want you to look at that word treasured. Treasured, which in, in a few other translations it's the word kept. It means to preserve something so that it is not lost. Mary didn't have access to a baby book. She didn't have photographs and documents from the hospital and all that that you keep. She didn't have cute little thumbprints and footprints and all that. But she pondered them. She treasured them. She kept them. And the, 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 remember that the word means to guard something so that it is not lost. The, the root of that word means to guard carefully. It was used to describe what the soldiers did while Jesus was hanging on the cross. When he was dying on the cross. Jesus himself used the word in, in John chapter 8. He said, I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps, if anyone keeps my word, if anyone treasures my word... He will never see death. It's used several places in the New Testament in that particular vein, which adds a whole new dimension to the idea of keeping, guarding our obedience to God so that it never gets lost. Well, Mary, on the other hand, was carefully guarding and preserving all of the sights and the sounds and, yes, even the smells and experiences of that holy night when Jesus was born. And for the rest of her life, when, when, whenever she would stop and remember about what happened that particular night, she was able to pull them out of the, the treasure chest of her heart. She treasured the first sight of this baby boy that had been born to her, although she was a virgin. She cherished how everything that had been told to her by the angel Gabriel had come to pass. She cherished, she savored the way that God was doing an amazing thing in her life and in the lives of all mankind. And as you hear on television, but wait, there's more. This verse says that having treasured these things in her heart, that, that Mary pondered them. She treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. Now the word pondered there literally means to throw or bring together. And it has the idea of gathering information, comparing, comparing the facts and weighing them all together in order to reach a conclusion. And that's what she was doing. You know, I've always envied those people who can take P 
pieces of just throw away stuff and, uh, and make something beautiful out of it. Make something attractive out of it. Uh, Jason's one of those people. Doug Womack's one of those people. Some of you ladies do that in the kitchen every day. You just take a little bit here and a little bit of that and you throw them together and it's great. But I, well, I, I envy them, but you know, it, it just doesn't help when I, you know, I say, man, that's just really nice. And, and then they say, oh, that's just something I threw together. It just makes me want to strangle them. Oh, that's just something I threw together. And when you look at all the, the little pieces, all the different things that they use to put, to put together, it's just amazing. Well, that's the idea behind this word for pondered. Mary took all the, the, the various elements of what had happened, leading up to and including the birth of Jesus, and she put them all together so that she could, re, so that she could savor and, and, and revel in the wonder and the awe of what had happened. We need more women like Mary. We, we need women who realize that, that God is at work in their lives even today. And, and that even though He's already given us a Savior, He is still doing some amazing things. We need more women who recognize that. We, we need more women who carefully weigh all of the things that they experience. And, and they ponder over them and they guard them so that they are not lost. We need more women who teach others, including their children, to capture and savor the preciousness of every single moment uh, that God gives to us. We, we take so many things for granted. We, we don't pay attention to them until we don't have them anymore. I, I remember when my dad was still living, going over to see him one day. And he was on oxygen 24 hours the last two years of his life. And even then sometimes had a difficult time breathing. He had emphysema real bad. And um, I remember sitting there watching him struggle to breathe. Trying to get into a position sitting there in that chair where he could breathe a little better. And I remember being feeling so helpless, not being able to help him. And Dad looked at me and he said, Rock, which is what he called me a lot, Rock, have you thanked God for being able to breathe today? It made me stop and think. You know, there's a lot of things that God gives me that I haven't thought to thank Him for. Today's godly mother, godly woman, remembers all of those things. She remembers the things that God has given. She remembers the different experiences that she has. She treasures that bouquet of dandelion flowers a little grubby fingers hand to her. And she remembers them. Her refrigerator is covered with little pictures. Not photographs. Pictures that have been drawn and colored. She doesn't, it doesn't bother her that there's little grubby fingerprints all over the place. Sure, she might clean them, but it doesn't upset her. This children are just going to be there for a little while and she savors every moment of it. <laughs> you know, when, when I started, when I reached that point in my life when I realized I'm older than I used to be, I began to feel like that, that, that so many things had passed by so quickly and I didn't pay attention to them. And I would find myself every once in a while when I'd see a young couple, even somebody I don't, didn't even know, a young couple with a small child. And I would volunteer information. Younger people, that's what you get to do when you get older. You get to volunteer advice without permission. And I've been taking advantage of it. 
and and I would say to them remember every single moment treasure every second you have with this baby because you're going to wink a couple of times and turn around a couple of times and that baby is going to be as old as mine are my baby's 33 <laughs> and I can't can't pause I can't remember him being so little ti so tiny as big as he is now there's so many so many precious moments that come our way I believe God has given them to us and I believe we should follow the example of Mary who treasured them she kept them she guarded them and she pondered them she put all these different pieces together to come up with what it means here's what she came up with God keeps his promises all the things God had told her were true some of the things that you and I might ponder, the conclusions that we might come to, might be exactly the same. God has blessed us. God has blessed us with so many things in our lives. Whether you have children or not, there's a lot of blessings that God gives us outside of having children. And He gives us those wonderful, sweet blessings. And we should treasure them so we don't forget them. And ponder them so we can not just pile them up and say oh isn't that sweet but so we can ponder them ponder them in a way that we pile them up like Mary did grab a little bit of this and a little bit of that and put them together and reach a conclusion that yes there is a wonderful and powerful God and he loves us yes there is a powerful God y'all know I'm, I'm about to quit y'all know yesterday was Joe Walker's uh, funeral service uh, at Raymond Road Baptist Church on the outskirts of Jackson and uh, s several of you were there Bill Dane did a great job he, he uh, I don't know if you'd call that a eulogy or, or what it was but he did a great job in remembering some of the things about his, his relationship with Joe Walker and then my pastor spoke uh, because Mr. Walker and I had been members of the same church this pastor had been our pastor and uh, my pastor is probably close to 90. I don't know exactly what his age is, but he's still preaching every Sunday. And um, he talked about, he, he spent a good bit of time telling people you need Jesus in your life. If you don't know him, you need to know him. After the service was over, I found him. He had, he's not able to get around very well and he was sitting in a chair in the lobby and I went up to him and I spoke to him and thanked him for uh, for his message and for the uh, the privilege of getting to hear him preach again and uh, then I looked at him and I said and after all these years you've been preaching it's still true isn't it and his face lit up and said it's still true Ladies, mothers or not, there's a lot of things that God is sending your way. A lot of things that he sends into your life every single day. Treasure them. Treasure them. And then ponder them. Gather them together and reach a conclusion. The conclusion is, God is still God. He's still in charge. And it's still all true. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, today we come to you in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for all these ladies who are here. Every one of us has a mother. <laughs> Every one of us. They may have all already gone ahead, but some of them are still with us. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to be more appreciative of them. But Father, we pray for these ladies that are here, whether they're mothers or not. We, we thank you for their work, their influence, their, their service to you through this church. And we, we ask today, Father, that you would bless them in ways we can't imagine. You'll help them, Father, to be the kind of women who are like Mary. They'll always be submissive to you. They'll always have the attitude that whatever you want, Lord, that's what we want. 
They'll always remember to praise you for all the things they do that, that you do in their lives. And Lord, they'll be the kind of women who savor every precious moment that you've given. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for hearing us today and for loving us. Now before we go, during our invitation, if there's, a, if there's someone here who recognizes these are the kinds of things that I need in my life, you may not even be a lady, but you recognize you need to be submissive in your spirit. And you need to come today and, and make sure you've made that commitment solid. There may be other issues in your life that God's Word today has touched on in your life. And you know you need to get it right with Him. Or perhaps, today is the day you need to, you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life so He can save you. It's still true, I promise. You come as we stand. service. Thank y'all for being here. Thank all the fellows who sang in the choir. It was a multi-generational thing. It was wonderful. Great, great job. Good job, youth choir. We have some items left from our craft sale. They're in the gym and uh, we'd love for you to take them home with a, an exchange of some money. <laughs> and uh, I think some things have been reduced. Uh, it's not a whole lot left, but we're just so proud of all of it. You know, we've got moms and grandmoms, grandmothers who made things for us, and uh, the youth made things, the GAs, the actings. It was a wonderful night, Wednesday night. Oh, listen, if you, for, if you didn't get a Mother's Day present, here's your last-minute shopping right, opportunity. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So y'all uh, go over and look. There's some plants left. Uh, Coach had his golf cart loaded down. He came up Main Street. He looked like a moving garden when he, when he came through town. There's still a few of those. But we thank everybody who came Wednesday night and those who, who sent stuff and made stuff. Thank you so much. We're very, very close to meeting our goals, and it's because of y'all. And this is, this is for the summer activities for our children and youth. All right, time for our blessing. One hand for yourself, one hand for somebody else. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Happy Mother's Day.